Okay. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to another DIY tutorial. My name is Julie Rack. If you're coming across my channel for the very first time, and um, if you're my returning subscriber, you are welcome, guys. All of you are all welcome to my channel. So, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I recreate this dress that I'm putting on, or rather, the one you see me putting on here on the pictures. And um, yes, and the same dress, you also get something like this, you know. <laughs> so, yes, I'm going to show you how you can be able to make such dress for yourself. Blouse, you can make it as blouse or you can make it as dress. But today, I'm going to show you how to make it as blouse, okay. So if you're interested, you want to see how I go about this, watch this video to the end. Don't go anywhere, okay? If you're yet to subscribe to my channel, kindly subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you will get notified when another DIY will come in, okay? So um, before we go into the tutorial, I'm going to share some a little bit like about how you achieve the stress in general and um, the, the amount of fabric that you need to get this uh, blouse done and uh, yeah how to take the measurement so guys uh the first thing i need to start with is going to be uh the measurement so taking your body measurement that is where you're going to determine how many yards of fabric you're going to use to achieve this okay so if you're making a blouse if you're making a blouse you are going to need uh, one and a quarter yard let's say two yard okay so whatever thing that you when you take the actual measurement you, you need, the remaining pieces you, is no waste. You can still use it for something about I would advise you to just get two yards of fabric, okay? Unless if you want the sleeves to be short. If you want the sleeves to be short, then one yard is going to be more than enough because you're going to fold it. If the fabric you're getting, if it's by 60, okay? If it's by 60, then you're going to fold it in that way that you use from that by 60 as the length of your sleeves, okay? But if it's not by 60, if it's less than 60, or if you want your sleeve to be longer, like mine, as you can see, mine is very long. Like, I want it long, the, the length of the sleeves now, from the midpoint of my neck, that is from the midpoint of my center back, to the end of my hand, okay, to my, to my, more than my ribs, okay. This is how it's looking like, okay, when I stretch my hand, this is how it's looking like so i got 31 31 inches so that is how that is how long i want my sleeves to be and when you fold it this length i'm talking about is on fold so when you open it wide it's uh 62 inches 62 inches long so that means it's longer than the 60 inches length so that means you're going to need additional quarter yard yes to to make to make up to your desire length okay so i hope you understand this so if you want to make it as a gown i will advise you to get about you need to get up to six yard because i don't know the type of fabric you're, most of this fabric is not even up to uh by 60 anymore so yes just budget yourself to have up to six yard if you're if you're going to make a, a dress at all this so yes uh, I think that is basically and you're going to need a bias because as you can see You will need bias to pipe in the the neckline. Okay. I use bias on here I use bias to pipe in the neckline here and That is it. You don't need any other thing and you need your matching threads. Okay. Yes That is all we need to create this look that we have here without further ado We are going to go into the tutorial now so that I will show you how you can make your blouse Thank you so much for watching once again. I will see you on the cutting table. So guys, before we continue, let me show you the proper way for you to fold your fabric and the right direction to fold. So if you're using one yard, let's say from here to this point here is 36 inches. So if you're using one yard and then the width is going to be 60. But if you're using uh, two yard, so the width is going to be 72 and from this point to this end here is going to be by 60 okay so the shorter length is going to be the length of your blouse and the wider part is going to be the 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 length of your sleeves okay 
So let's say if you're using one yard, this from here to here is going to be by 60. But if you're using two yards, so from the end, how I took the measurement to the other end is going to be by 72. So now this is how you're going to fold the fabric, okay? So now you're going to fold it in a way that you have um, the line that demarcates it between, okay? Uh, the back and the front. So I'm going to mark it so that you understand what I mean. So from this uh, lower part here is going to be the back, okay? And from this upper part is going to be the front. So that means the in the midpoint of between the back and the front is going to be the shoulder, okay? So I'm going to fold it back like this. So this is how you're going to fold your fabric, okay? For you to get exactly how to cut out your, your blouse, this is how you're going to fold your fabric. So this edge is here is going to be on fold, which is going to be the center front and the center back. And the upper part is the shoulder, while the lower part is going to be uh, uh, on fold, not fold, right? You don't need to fold. It's, it doesn't have to be fold. Okay, so basically that is what you need to do. And then afterward, you're going to take your slip measurement, okay? So I hope this explanation was clear. I have my chalk here, my bias, my table, and my fabric. This is chiffon, okay? I'm using chiffon for here. So I have gone ahead to fold my fabric just the way I show you earlier on the paper. Okay, so that is the same thing I did on my fabric. The lower part is not folded. So this is my front and the center front is on fold. Okay, and this is the back and the center front and also is on fold. Then from the upper part is the shoulder. Okay, here this is the shoulder and it's on fold. Okay, just the same thing I explained to you on the paper. The same thing i have folded my fabric here okay so this is the side where it's going to be your slip opening okay so i'm going to go ahead and arrange it well so that i can pin this down because i don't really trust chiffon that much chiffon and silk i don't really trust them so when you when you're working with them you need to be extremely careful yeah they are very delicate fabric you need to deal with them with care so after pinning this down now, so I'm going to confirm the measurement for you to know. So I have less than 70, 72 inches here. I have less than 72 inches here, but it's more than enough to contain my, my sleeve length. After taking my measurement from my center back to the end of my sleeves, and then my blouse length is going to be 21 inches. So my blouse length is 21, so you can make it longer or shorter at this point, okay? So now the next thing we're going to do now, I'm going to start by taking the width of my uh, neckline, okay? I'm going to be making use of 5 inches here. From my center front, I'm going to mark 5 inches inward, okay? So from the, from the shoulder, I'm going to mark 2.5 inches below for my neck depth, okay? So the neck width is 5 inches, the neck depth is 2.5 inches. Okay, so from the point where I mark that uh, 5 inches, I'm going to mark 1 inch below. You can mark 0 0.75 below or 1 inch below. This part, that allowances that you're, uh, you're, keep, you're keeping is for you to use it to create uh, a channel where you're going to fit in your strap, okay? So afterward, I'm going to get my French curve row and I'm going to connect my neckline. I hope this explanation is clear. So now the next thing now, I'm going to take my sleeve measurement. The, the width of this fabric is longer than the sleeve, uh, my sleeve length, so I'm, I need to take the measurement. So I'm going to be marking now 31 inches at this point. So from the center front or from the center back, anywhere, yes, from the center front, I'm going to be uh, taking my sleeve length, which is going to be from my center front to where my sleeve length is going to stop is going to be um, 31 inches, okay? So I'm going to repeat this measurement twice so that I can have an, uh, a straight line connecting uh, these lines, okay? So I did some mistake here. So what I did, like I did not take much allowances for my sleeve opening. So when you are going to cut out your sleeve opening, I will advise you to mark about 15 inches. Okay, so right now from my hemming part here, that is the lower part. 
I'm going to divide my round hip circumference by 4 and then I'll add uh, 2.5 inches. So I'm marking 12.5 inches here and I'm going to repeat the measurement twice here to this part here so that I can have a straight line, okay? So the total length I'm going to use for my sleeve opening here is 13 inches. So if you're going to uh, mark yours, you should mark uh, 15 so that you have full volume. But if you like how mine is, it's not that full. If you like it like that, then you're going to mark 13 inches, okay? So you're going to use one inch from the upper part to create a channel where your strap is going to pass through, okay? And then the total uh, width is going to remain for your slip opening is going to be 12 inches, okay? So, and also remember to add your joining allowance. So I'm marking 13 inches here at this point for my slip opening. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my uh, ruler now or my French curve rule so that I can use it to create the, to create the side line, okay? To connect this line together. I hope you understand. So if you are very good with your free hand, at this point, free hand, it will work much better on this point because you know how you're going to create the line, okay, the curve. So mark a straight line first, connecting it all the way, uh, to maybe close, not too close to the, the part where you mark that 12.5 inches. So please just watch carefully and see where I'm taking my measurement to, okay, or my connection to. I hope you understand this. So now that I'm done connecting this line together now, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start by cutting out this. So basically that is all you need to do. This is all you need to draft. Please remember to add your sewing allowance from the side here because I forgot to do that. Okay, I forget to add uh, my sewing allowance from the side. So after cutting out the side, I'm going to cut out my neckline, okay? So basically this is it and um, I'm going to separate the shoulder first, okay? You don't need to do anything to the center front and the center back. Don't cut it, please. The only part where you're going to cut out is the shoulder, okay? The, uh, separate the front and the back from the shoulder, okay? So that is what I'm going to do right here. So uh, this is my two piece here. I'm going to cut out trim of these rough edges here. So if you have any uh, part that is rough, you can trim it off. So the next thing, I will just separate the two pieces now. Either this is the front or the back or whichever way I will choose as a back and front. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really have front and back. You can wear it any other way. So the, yes, basically this is my blouse almost. So when you're going to the sewing machine, this is what you're going to do. When you join it, it's going to remain like this, basically. So the first thing you need to do, you need to fix in your bias, okay? You need to pipe in the neckline first before you start doing any other thing. This is the first thing you're going to do once you have cut out the fabric out, okay? So, and uh, you are going to need uh, four pieces of strap. So that you can create your strap that you're going to use on the shoulder part okay so the length i have here let me confirm it so the length of this rectangle here or the width is uh by 44.5 inches okay so you're going to go i'm going to go to my sewing machine and i'm going to uh, create a uh, stitch my to create my strap rather okay so i have gone ahead to face in my or uh, use bias to pipe in my neckline so this is how it's looking like now okay so this is how it's looking like and this part here i'm going to go to the weaving machine i'm going to weave all this part okay so that we can be able to and once you weave it, you're going to fold these edges, okay? From the slip opening, you need to fold in with 0 0.25, like I said earlier, okay? So you need to double fold it to have a clean finishing. And uh, yes, 
so these are my two pieces and i've already used bias on the both neckline okay so this is my uh, strap that i'm going to use i've gone ahead to prepare my strap like i said it's less than 0 0.5 inch okay so that is how tiny i want it to be if you want your uh, strap to be bigger then you do it in the way you want to so i have gone ahead to weave okay so this part i just wanted to run everything up okay so this one was actually a mistake i was not planning to weave this one it was after i was supposed to finish joining the side before i weave here but anyway i made a mistake it's still nothing spoiled though so here this is the part where you need to at this point you need to fold in this part twice okay to hide in all the rough edges uh, i'm still going to fold in twice even the fact that i've already uh, weave it and uh, if you don't have a weaving overlocking machine you can actually fold this twice okay so even though i overlock it I still want to uh, fold it twice because I want to have a clean finish from the inside. I don't want it to look like <laughs> I want it to look like a ready-made, like imported cloth. Yes, that is what I want this clothes to look like. So yes. So after now, what I'm going to do? I'm going to iron. So I did the same thing here. Okay. I did the same thing to the second part. Okay. So. What I'm going to do now, we are going to iron this, iron this one, to we'll get it ready for the next step, okay? So I have gone ahead to iron all my, uh, iron it rather, I've ironed it and also I'm trimming off all the excess that I have here. The only thing I haven't ironed is the strap, so I'm going to show you how I iron it. I just feel like the need of showing you what I did okay so i'm going to iron my straps so if you don't have iron i know light has been messing up around here mostly here in abuja i don't know about other states in nigeria generally we have been having issue with light so sometimes if you're lucky there is light you do some work but sometimes if you're not lucky we don't uh, have light so yes so you need to iron it to have a clean finishing have a professional look finishing okay so this is how it's going to look like so i have gone ahead to iron the four pieces so yeah so now the next thing i'm do, going to do now i'm going to make sure you're folding it to the right side okay so with this bias it's going to show you the wrong side you're working with so from the wrong side here i'm going to let me trim this off so I'm going to fold in like this, just once, okay? Just a little, not much, just a little. Okay, and we're going to iron it. Okay, and then you're going to go over again. And you're going to iron okay just a little just a little did you see that so by the time you go back to your swing, uh, swing machine now you are going to stop stitch this part okay you're going to stop stitch this part and it's going to look really beautiful okay you stop stitch here okay to have a clean finishing from here and then uh, the same thing also going to do here. So once I'm done iron, I'm going to pin this down. Okay. If if you can be able to control it without pinning, then just go straight to the sewing machine and stop stitch. But if you can, you can pin it down so that it will guide you when you are stitching. So I have gone ahead to pin all this down. Okay, I have pinned both the front and the back uh, sleeves. So the next thing we're going to do before I will go back to my sewing machine, 
um, when at the point where we are going to be stop stitching the the sleeve opening, you're also going to join the shoulder together. Okay, once I'm done stop stitch the sleeve opening, I'm going to join the two shoulder together. That is my front piece and the back. I'm going to join them from the shoulder. Okay, so yeah, that's basically what I'm going to do. So we are going to do that together. So right now I'm on my sewing machine now. I'm going to start now by uh, uh, stop stitch this uh, the part where we fold. Okay, so that is what I'm doing right now. So the next thing now, I'm going to pin my two front and my two, uh, yes, my front and my back shoulder together. So yes, so I'm going to join them together and then I'm going to pin and then stitch, okay? So you're going to stitch at the point, uh, at the allowances that you added when you were drafting it. Remember mine, I mark one inch down. So if you mark, um, uh, 0 0.5 inch or if you mark 0 0.75 you're going to use that same allowance to join the shoulder together okay So once I'm done now, let me open it so that you can see. So I'll go to my ironing table and iron this down and then I come back and stop stitch it down so that I can create a channel for my straps, okay? So yes, let's go back to the cutting table. So I have gone ahead to press this. Okay, I have iron, give it a very good press. So what you mean now is for us to face in these straps, okay? I'm going to show you two ways how to pass your strap. Is okay? So you're going to choose which one is the easiest. So to so I have also faced in my straps here already. As you can see, my strap has already finished. So when you look at this part here, do you see how neat, nice and clean here is? Look at the inside, very nice and clean. And the strap is already, I've already fixed in my strap. So yeah, so let me show you how I did that from the second side. Option one, I'm going to place your strap okay you can choose anyone place your strap here your strap has to be here okay inside like this so make sure you're going to fit in the strap inside and you're going to pin it okay so this is the option one fit the strap inside and then you're going to pin so then when you go back to the sewing machine you're going to stop stitch it and the second option is that you're going to first of all stitch the the channel first down okay then you use your uh, your loop toner to fix in this uh, strap inside so this is the option one that i'm working with so i will go to my sewing machine to join it um and then when i go to my sewing machine from this upper part here okay from this upper part here you're going to stop stitch at this point Okay, stop stitch at that point. Then you're going to take the stitching all the way till the end. While for the other side here, the the second uh, option, you will just stop stitch. You just stop stitch it. Then you use your loop turner to uh, fit in your strap. Okay, so I will go to my sewing machine now to do that, and I will be back. So I have done create the elastic. The, sorry, I have done create the channel for my strap. And also I have stitched down the part where I said 
you can fit in your strap inside and stitch okay so what i'm going to do now is to show you how i fit in my strap using the loop okay this is my loop uh, toner and uh, i'm going to get my loop i'm going to pass the loop toner inside the strap uh, uh, channel okay and then i'm going to get my strap and um hold on so did you see i'm going to uh pin in the the hook okay and then i'll easily just take it out from here so that is the option too i hope this was the easiest one or choose between any of the easiest one you can use to fix in your strap okay so what i will do now i'm going to just pin in the strap inside there to so that i can stop stitch the from that part okay you need to secure it make sure you secure it at this point so please watch carefully to see the part where i'm stitching okay so you need to secure this part so now that i'm done let me cut out the the thread i don't need so for, you see this part here that is left open okay this there is part that is left open so i'm also going to stop stitch that part so to secure it proper and do, by doing this you're going to have a very nice finishing uh look from the inside when you turn the inside okay So now that I'm done, I'm going to trim off the threads, okay? Trim off the threads, and the next step is going to be on the joining this, this side together, okay? So I'm going to start now by joining this side. So there was a mistake I did. While I was cutting it uh, from the beginning where we are drafting the pattern, I did not remember to add my sewing allowance. So what I'm going to use to join the side together here I'm going to be using a 0.5 inch allowance so i'm actually taking in from my measurement so please don't make the mistake that i'm going to that i've just did so make sure you add your joining allowance when you are cutting the fabric because you know when you make a mistake when you are drafting direct to the fabric you cannot correct it unless if you're drafting from the pattern and then you're cutting to the fabric okay so remember to add your joining allowance so yes so i hope you enjoy watching this video i hope you learned something from this channel today if you do don't forget to give this video a thumbs up okay so now that i'm done joining the side i'm going to go to my weaving machine i'm going to weave this rough uh, part here from the lower part okay i'm going to weave it round so i have done weave it now so it's time for me to iron it you need to iron this unless if you don't have iron but if you have iron you need to iron it so that you can uh, be able to have a clean finish uh, project okay so i'm going to iron this round first i'm going to fold it okay i'm going to fold it a little with 0 0.25 and then i'm going to go over again to fold it in uh, again twice i need to fold it twice so that i can hide in all those uh, uh, weaving threads okay so I'm folding it now so I'm going to start now by pinning this down so that I can go back to my sewing machine to stitch it okay so I have done uh, pin this I will go to my sewing machine now to do that so voila my blouse is ready the only thing now I need to give it another press so I enjoy doing this because the finishing after you press like ironing is one of the greatest joy you ever find when you when you are creating a garment okay so make sure you find happiness iron your clothes when you are working on it or when you are creating a dress okay so yeah basically that is it for this tutorial this is the look this is the finished look everything looks so nice and clean uh thank you so much for watching if you're watching to this moment i want to say a very big thank you I hope you get the chance to recreate one for yourself and uh, help me share this video so that others still can see it, okay? Have a blessed day. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, 
have a good afternoon good evening good morning wherever you are watching this from i will see you on my next tutorial okay thank you so much once again for watching